not the boy. Gion mi mehocha. Gabo je am prish gabi mi rish. You're too late! You will not get him! joy that I received your last letter. Know that you are missed terribly here in India. If my calculations are correct and the International Postal Service is kind, this letter will keep you company as you make the final leg of your journey to Scotland. I hesitate to say anything for fear you'll think me foolish, even hysterical. Your father made it his life's work to research his family's twisted history. This and his obsession with the occult combined to unravel his poor mind. John loved his family and his family home, but he hated and mistrusted them in equal measure. So, beware of the Gordons. Blood is not always thicker than water. Your loving mother.
even try to read any real meaning into all of this? We have arrived, sir. Welcome, Mr. Gordon. I'm Andrew Harrison. Mr. Harrison, it's good to finally meet you. From our correspondence, I expected you to be older. Ah, uh, thank you. I'll lead the way. It's quite dark already. We can continue to talk inside. David, welcome to Skahandu House. Lady Margaret, how kind of you to welcome me in person at such a late hour. An impressive building. Skahandu, though. Unusual. What, what is its meaning? Unusual only if you have not bothered to study Gaelic. It means Black Mirror House. Many generations of the Gordon family have been master of this house. It is a great responsibility. Perhaps the greatest a man could bear. If I may, I would like to know more about my father's last days. It is too late in the day for such morbid talk. You do look so very much like John, though. Angus, please show Master David to his room. Yes, ma'am. I trust you had a pleasant journey. This place is rather remote, even for Scotland. It was most pleasing, thank you. I was fortunate enough to stop off in several fascinating places on my way here. How long have you been practicing law? I came to the bar a few years ago. I'm at Chambers in Edinburgh with lawyers who have served the Gordon family for generations. I'm embarrassed to ask, but it is my job. Have you proof of who you say you are? You are David Gordon, son of the late John Gordon. Please, I quite understand. Here you are. Hmm. Hmm. What a curious object. Isn't it? It belonged to my father. He posted it to me shortly before his death. I'm not at all sure what it is. Perhaps it's something else returning home where it belongs. Like its new owner. Have a good night, Master David. I shall continue my studies. Uh, please follow me, Master David. Your grandfather, his lordship, Edward Gordon.
Somebody still cares. Maybe you weren't as bad as Mother believed. This way, Edward. sir. Father never spoke of you, but mother never had a kind word to say. You were the worst of the lot, she said. There is no denying it. We are family. These are all family members? Yes, sir. The Gordons are one of the oldest families in Scotland. Uh, please, sir, I advise you to do as your grandmother instructed and get some sleep. You must be weary. If you would be so kind as to follow me, sir. Magnificent. That is the master's study, sir, but there'll be plenty of time to examine it in the light tomorrow. I suppose it's hard to keep things dry, what with all the rain you get here. A most amusing, Master David. We do our best, sir. None of us are as young as we used to be. I've annoyed the old fellow enough. First impressions count. Does that sometimes, sir? A lady Gordon expects you for breakfast at eight, sir. Thank you. Lady Gordon called you Angus? Uh, pleased to meet you, Angus. Yes, sir. She did. I am Mr. McKinnon. Uh, Mr. McKinnon. Yes. Um, I'd advise you not to leave the room tonight. Ticking clocks are not the worst thing you may encounter in the house at night, if you don't know your way around. Sleep well, sir. Maybe he's more of a morning person. I doubt this place could ever be properly warm. I got somewhat turned around following Angus through the house. Sorry, Mr. McKinnon. But I think my room is probably around here somewhere. Hold on. This looks like... Wait a moment. This is a piece of a model. I can barely see my hand in front of me. Everything I ever owned could fit in there, five times over. Everything I ever owned... Everything I ever owned could fit. Pieces of some kind of drawing. How odd.
The candle is nearly gone, but it should do for a while once lit. The candle is nearly gone, but it should do for a while once lit. I'm going to need a light to find my... Glad I don't have to carry you around anymore. Mr. McKinnon lifted you up with ease. Without some obscure local law that required me being here in person, I would probably never have come. <laughs> a pigeon amongst the cats. Sorry to inform you of death of John Gordon. Stop. Please return to Skahundu House. Stop. Andrew Harrison, lawyer. Stop. I should get a new passport. This one's filling up. This handsome, cheery, sober man. He's not the one I remember from my childhood. Hmm. Not many matches left. My faithful friend, Insomnia. I wonder if Andrew has left the library yet. The candle is nearly gone, but it should do for a while once lit. Ah, just what I need. Waiter, big enough to fit your own weight and in food into. No, this isn't right. There should be a room here. Did you say something? Uh, it's nothing. Research can be a frustrating business. Ghosts, legends, ancient history. Where's the rest of them? Despair, by a man called Howard Phillips Lovecraft. Ghastly shades of bygone gladness, clawing fiends of future sadness, mingle in a cloud of madness ever on the soul to lie. Thus the living, lone and sobbing, in the throes of anguish throbbing, with the loathsome furies robbing night and noon of peace and rest. But beyond the groans and grating of abhorrent life is waiting sweet oblivion, culminating all the years of fruitless quest. The words of a troubled soul. Is this what Father meant by a family of snakes? Wouldn't it be more comfortable working here? Uh, that's Lady Gordon's private desk. It would be improper for me to use it. Wouldn't it be more comfortable? Uh, that's...
Selected Poems by Edgar Allan Poe. Take this kiss upon the brow, and in parting, Shame. Attics often speak volumes about the owners of a house. Barging into someone's bedroom in the middle of the night is not how to earn their trust. More pieces of the same drawing. Maybe I can make out what it shows if I had enough of them. <sighs> Exquisite craftsmanship. I doubt our family could afford a marvel such as this nowadays. Just how old is the Gordon clan? For all I know, it could stretch back to Roman times or even further. Who would tear up photographs, given the painstaking process surrounding their creation? It's too dark outside to speculate about the size of the estate. Somewhere out there they found father, or rather what was left of him. What a cruel way to take your own life. On the morrow, I will explore the grounds, as soon as the sun is up. An earring. I doubt it was buried in the ashes on purpose. Someone must have lost it. The coal doesn't seem to affect the residents of this house. All the fires are fighting a losing battle against the draft. Contrary to everything I've learned so far about Grandfather Edward, Lady Margaret still worships him. I used to regale my Indian school friends with tales of knights in shining armor. Oh, locked.
That looks daunting. Daunting, but rewarding and fascinating. Fascinating? Yes, indeed. The history of the Gordon family goes back a long way. So it's true we are one of the oldest families in Scotland? Oh, much more than that. The Gordons have owned this land back into antiquity, before records were even kept. Add to that some unique and unusual local laws. Well, it can be a challenge, but a welcome one. Did you know my father? I was called to the house shortly after your father arrived. Why did that need a lawyer? Those complex local laws I spoke of were to blame. Your father left when Edward died, so none of the required legal formalities to transfer the house were observed. Does that mean...? Not at all. There will be no issue with transferring the estate to your name, if that is what you wish. Uh, have you had a chance to examine my papers? I have, and am delighted to say that everything is in order. I would not be doing my job if I didn't warn you that with Edward dead and your father absent, the family fortune has somewhat diminished over the years. However, the real treasure is the castle and the grounds themselves. I haven't spent as much time as I'd like here, but it is a unique place. I notice that the door to the master's study is locked. Might I get a key for it? Of course. I will see to it that you are supplied with one, if there is one available. No door should be locked to the soon-to-be owner, after all. Well, it's been a long day. I bid you good night. I'll get myself something to read and then head to bed too. Good night. Hiding something, are we? I didn't see you there. You gave me quite a fright. <clears throat> you are? I'm the one who keeps the house from being covered in weeds. Name's Rory. Pleased to meet you. Uh, I'm David Gordon. I pretend you were coming today. Why are you sitting in the dark? There's enough light for me, laddie. Oh, your eyes. I'm sorry, I didn't realize. I see more than most do, son. How long have you worked for the Gordons? Always been a gardener, and I do some fishing. The lock's a bonny place, calms the nerves. Did you know my father? I did. I. Shameful what they did to him. What do you mean? Who is they? Hmm. I'll leave you to your supper then.
Being a Gordon can be a curse, laddie. Your father kenned the hard way. Mind you dinner follow in his footsteps. Blood. Not human, I presume. Better safe than sorry. This might come in handy. Rory just disappeared into the darkness. The cellar can wait till tomorrow.
Hmm, this might take a while. I need to be steady and try to... Oh! Oh, well, there you go. That's not the right combination. Let's see what father didn't even want his own family to find. Hmm, now what are you for? Here we go. This side is done as far as I can tell. But there must be more. What an intricate piece of furniture. Dear Lady Gordon, I write to you with the utmost urgency. I am seeking information about my patient, your son, John Gordon. During our conversations, he makes allusions to his relationship with his father, but will not expand when pressed. You have failed to respond to my previous request, so I am writing again to insist in the strongest terms possible that you furnish me with the required answers. Your son's recovery depends on it. Yours faithfully, Dr. Leah Farber. Bethlehem Hospital, London. What secrets about my father is Lady Margaret concealing? Father knew how to open the cabinet. This will help. Father knew how to open the cabinet. This will help. Father knew how to open the cabinet. This will help.
Something's not right. Something's not right. That sounded like some part of the desk moved. Yes, that's too open. We're getting somewhere. A key and a note from father. Someone is tampering with my work. I know it. I know it. I hear them as they whisper and snicker. They sneak in when I sleep. This place isn't safe. I have locked my work away in the study. I am leaving now. I will put an end to this terrible torment one way or another. David, if you find this, then I am dead. The forces abroad here have got to me. I am sorry you have been drawn into this tragedy. The answers you seek are amongst the papers in the master's study. Use them. Stay safe. I love you, son. My God, what happened here? What did they do to my father? Is this the key father spoke of? Hmm. Oh, hi there. You, you startled me. Sorry, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to. Hey, wait. Where did he go? doesn't fit. The lock is too heavy. Hmm.
I've never seen a key like this before. It feels like Father wanted me to keep it a secret. Open sesame. Someone's been searching here. Either they didn't have time to clean up, or simply did not care. Myths and Legends of the Highlands. From the library, I'd wager. Everything but the seal. Just bits and bobs. Some sort of secret compartment. Father's handwriting. The chapel. The family chronicles. I may find answers there. Father's handwriting. The chapel. The family chronicles, I may find answers there. Looks like a note about the cipher in the shelf. What a mess. Letters about the day-to-day -day running of the estate. These might be useful if I decide to live here. The handwriting must be Edwards. Pay half what he asks forward to lawyers. Charming. And this one. Your money will protect you forever. The hangman will catch up eventually. A curse on you and your family. Seems he was as popular as he was pleasant. I beg you to reconsider, Sir Edward. My family has lived on this land for many generations, and to be told we must leave our own home is too much to bear. Alice, my wife, whom you have met, is beside herself with grief. We have nowhere else to go. I beg you to look inside your heart and allow us to remain. The signs are there. Deny them at your peril! The ancient evil that inhabits this land has seeped into the very stone of the castle walls, and if you do not tread carefully, it will infect your family!
This looks interesting. Hmm. Screwed down tight. <laughs> Someone didn't want it moved. This castle certainly has its secrets. It looks very precise, accurate. There's a bit miss. Hold on. Stop your waiting! Stop your waiting! Wait! The boy! Did you see him? Where did he go? What did I tell you about disturbing me in my sleep? <laughs> Are you all right, sir? What happened, David? Uh, the boy. There was blood, and he, he pushed him down. Who? Who do you think you saw? Him. them too, can't you? I've been babbling in my sleep since I was a child. It's nothing to worry about. Poor girl is scared out of her wits. Of course, sir. Sorry, sir. My father. What did he think he saw? It ain't my place to say, sir. But I... Go on. Begging your pardon, sir. 
You should go. This place, it drove your father mad. Drove him? Did he say what or whom he saw? I'm sure I don't know, sir. Best not push her too hard. She's scared enough of me already. Sorry, I didn't get your name. It's Ailsa, sir. Ailsa Cranon. Oh, and Master Andrew asks if you would join him in the library. After breakfast, of course. Thank you, Miss Cranon. Get a hold of yourself, David. what drove my father from the castle when he was young? Were they what drew him back? He must have found something in the family chronicles he spoke of. Nobody else saw the boy or the old man who looked like my grandfather Edward. But it felt real, more even than the daydreams that plagued my childhood. I don't remember ever seeing that boy. A faded memory, perhaps? As far as I know, I'd never been to this castle before. Elsa knows more than she wants to tell me. And once you're done in the kitchen, go and clean up the cellar. The spiders have made a nest down there. A big one, too. They're crawling everywhere. Uh, Master David, nice of you to grace us with your presence. I appreciate your patience. I've had the staff prepare some of the finest Scottish delicacies for you. Black pudding, haggis, scrambled eggs with deer brain, and bacon. I shot the deer myself. Mother was never a fan of dishes made from entrails. In this case, she'd be missing out. That was delicious. Thank you. I'm sure our local specialities must seem peculiar to one raised as you were. I was raised in India. My spectrum of peculiar has quite a range. Smoking a pipe? 
I thought that would be beneath her station. Uh, Miss Crannan? Isn't that used for transporting cooked food? Why is there blood in it? Ugh, the wee scanner thought it would be funny to put one of his dead beasties in it to fear me. He should keep them in the cellar and... Sorry, sir. I'm speaking out of turn. Did you ever talk to my father? I was serving here when he... That is to say, I... Go on, please. I didn't think it would be proper, sir. Lady Margaret said... Oh, sorry, sir. I must get on with my work. She's as scared of Margaret as she is of the butler. Poor girl. Um, you said my father saw things. I don't want to talk about it, sir. I notice the attic door is locked. You'd best ask Angus, sir. I hardly go up there. The mere mention of the attic terrified her. What is in there? I think you may have lost this. Oh, sir! Oh, thank you, sir. I only wanted to see how it looked in the mirror. I didn't mean to. I was scared to tell her ladyship. Oh, she can have such a temper. What are you going to do now? Uh, if I can sneak it into the salon, maybe her ladyship will think she lost it there herself. From what I know about her, I very much doubt her ladyship will. What happened to my father here? <laughs> I'm sorry, sir. You're not like the rest of them here. Oh, sir, there's things you should know, but I really need this job. She knows something, but how can I convince her to trust me? Would you like me to escort you to the cellar? Wouldn't be proper to ask the owner of the house to do that, sir. Well, I'm not the owner yet, and you didn't ask. Very kind of you, sir. Happy to help. I'll let you know when I'm ready to accompany you down there. I shall leave you to your work.
Elsa knows more about my father than she dares tell me. I'd better earn her trust now. She might return to the village once the weather clears. Elsa knows... Shall we? Not until we clear out... center down here alone. Let's see what we can find down here. Raw spirit. Not particularly palatable, but good for cleaning and magic tricks. The water of life. Some of these whiskies are from local distilleries. <sighs> Not the most hygienic workstation. Hmm, a hunting map. Looks like they've been poaching outside the Gordon estate. Step right up! Sir? What are you... D oh my! Oh, that's amazing! Uh, does that not hurt? No, a little trick I learned in India. Elsa, I didn't think... Huh. And you are? Edward Mallory. You may call me Edward III. So this is Cousin Eddie. He seems... Welcome to my castle. As terrible as the rest of them. My castle indeed. Pleased to meet you, Eddie. So, your parents would be my aunt and uncle Clara and Victor. Are they... Dead. Dead as door nails, the pair of them. Lovely. You've lived here all your life, so you would have met my father. Only after he lost what marbles he had left. If it were up to me, I'd have locked him up in the loony bin a bit sooner. Locked him up? So what are you doing down here anyway? There's a line between honesty and rudeness that Cousin Eddie doesn't seem to recognize. I was helping Miss Crannan. Oh, Why didn't you ask me? Excuse me, sir. Sirs. I really have to go. Leaving so soon? Was it something I said? They all tend to act like that in the presence of nobility. You said something about a loony bin? I did. Oh. Oh, you don't know. Well? Well, never you mind. I have an animal to prepare. I'm getting very tired of everyone in this house avoiding my questions. There's something you should know, sir. Something important. I overheard them talking, and I... Uh, you're paid to work, not chat. Get to it, girl. Uh, sorry, Mr. McKinnon. 
library after dinner. At last. I might get some answers. This will make it easier to carry. The boy. It must be. But I need to be sure. Perhaps the names are on the back. Lady Margaret. She looks happy. I can't imagine her smiling like that these days. My family. Yet they're all still strangers to me. <sighs> Grandfather Edward, just as he looked last night. Regardless of what I told Miss Cranon, these visions are like nothing I've ever experienced before, and they're getting worse. Lady Margaret. David. May I first apologize for my strange behavior last night? It's just that... Oh, think nothing of it. You are obviously tired from your travels. Least said, soon is mended. I saw an old photograph of a boy in the other room. Something tells me she wouldn't be happy if she knew I had it in my pocket. Ah. That was taken in 1894. Young Johnny, your father. You can remember the exact year. It's a funny thing when you reach my age. You can remember dates from decades ago. But not what you had for breakfast. Maybe others can't. Um, who, may I ask, were the others in the picture? That would be your Aunt Clara. 
and your late great-grandmother, the last true Countess of Scarhandew House. And my dear Edward, of course. I uh, noticed my father had a scar in his face. How did that happen? <sighs> Falling from a tree, perhaps? I can't recall. But your father was a clumsy child. Can't recall. But you remember the date the photograph was taken? Hmm. Uh, what kind of man was my grandfather? Oh, he was magnificent. He was handsome, so handsome, and caring. Caring enough to knock a defenseless child down the stairs? All was so very different when he was around. The maid. She seemed to be acting strangely, like she was frightened of me. Yes, well... She's a simple sort, that one. She has probably heard of the curse of the Gordons the locals like to whisper about. Curse? What curse? Just a peasant superstition. I would guess she was worried you'd show the same displays of unpredictable violence as your father did. I never knew my father to be the violent type. Oh, there are many things you do not know about your father. This is his doing. What? But, but how? I'd rather not discuss it, David. And that maid should really keep her mouth shut and locate the earring she lost. She's like a magpie with shiny, expensive things. Uh, this may seem like an unusual question. I'd be surprised if it wasn't, dear boy. Have I ever been here before? Is it possible I visited as a child and can no longer remember? Oh no, you are a stranger to these walls. And I have a feeling you prefer it stayed that way. I shall take my leave, Lady Margaret. Yes. Oh, and David, the master of the house needs to respect the privacy of those under his roof. Even your father understood that. Sometimes a cabinet is locked for a reason. A cabinet? I am i don't know what you mean. I'm sorry, I, I don't know what to say. I, I don't know anything about it. I see. Never mind, then. David, apologies for not being here to greet you. As the telephone in the castle is not working due to the recent storm, I have had to journey to the village to communicate with my office. Upon my return, I shall show you to the chapel where you can pay your respects to your father. Yours, Andrew Harrison. Or maybe I'll just head to the chapel myself, just as soon as the weather clears.
breath some fresh air. <sighs> Master David. You could tell it was me. Your footsteps. I ken the walk of everyone here. Well, that's, that's rather incredible. Aye, that it is, laddie. That it is. I hear better than most. See more than most and all. Father had a similar toolbox. Back when he still fixed things around the house. Before. In the painting. This is the grave I, I saw in that waking dream or whatever it was. The grave my father buried something in as a boy. Who's buried here? If I could just. Ah! These vines are too thick! I need something to cut through these. Locked with a padlock. Andrew will have a key, but I'm not keen on waiting for his return. Um, may I borrow your bolt cutter? Maybe. If I can what you need it for. The graves. I would like to tidy them up. That way I can pay my respects properly. Is that a fact? Why is that then? They are my family. They deserve to be remembered. Oh, fair enough, laddie. Just grab it yourself, will ye? I'd better have a look at the grey from the painting before sunset. Cecilia Shaw Nee Gordon. Aunt Cecilia. Now, let's see if there's something really buried in here. Another piece of the castle model. Another part of the model. And it's stained with what seems to be old blood. Why did Father bury this when he was a child?
being the chronicle of the family Gordon, as laid down by Sir Drummond Gordon, the year of our Lord, 1413. Local legend speaks of this particular glen as being inhabited from time immemorial. Enigmatic, elaborately carved pectish stones stand as timeless evidence of this. As for the locals, they appear prideful of the counsel they delight in giving to visitors. Traveler, beware. The Celtic peoples arrived in this place like a great beast, bringing with them the bloodlines that would eventually spawn the Gordon clan. Using their superior numbers, knowledge, and machines of war, they swiftly conquered the primeval Picts. With them, they brought to their religion and druid clerics. The magics these wise men used did shape forever the lands, even until this present day. It is said that the sempiternal burden our family carries rose at that time. It is well recorded how the Empire of Rome did fail to tame the wayward Scots, that they did even raise a barrier to protect their mighty empire. What is seldom told is the truth behind their defeat. Our ancestors drew upon ancient powers to aid their victory, powers not easily fathomed by the fragile human mind. This aid did come at the greatest of costs. A debt as yet unsettled. A price we will continue to pay until the last Gordon passes to dust. For the centuries, we Gordons made the land our own. Others did bow to us as we kept the secrets of Skahandu, the secrets of the Black Mirror. Even as tragedy, and madness did fester in our foundations. We held fast and steered the land through vile English attack and worse. In time, the Gordons and the land became one. Some pages have been ripped out. The only thing left seems to be some kind of family oath. In blood we are bound, to the land we protect, to the truths we alone may conceal. I shall forfeit my life, lest my clan should suffer. I shall forfeit my spirit, to hold the darkness at bay. In blood we are bound, till the day of the reckoning. What are you? This feels like it can't be real. All this looks like the bottom of a lake. trying to show me.
my baby with me to save it from this rotten family. Find my child! Are you all right? Uh, did you... did you see her? She... Uh, drowned. Calm down, you're in shock. What were you doing clamoring about in here? <laughs> oh, if I told you, 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 you'd think me mad. Odd. That is just what your father said to me. What? Who are you? My name is Dr. Leah Farber. I treated your father at the asylum. The asylum? Let's get you back to the castle and make sure you are all right. What did you come here for? I'm not sure your father's story is finished yet, and there are some things I still need to make my peace with. What's this about an asylum? As I said, your father was admitted. Why? Who did that to him? I did. But, unfortunately, he managed to escape. What? Hold on a minute. How dare you come in here and... Told you? Your father was a madman. A complete and utter madman. Don't mind me. Please continue. Well, what right did you have to lock my father up in a, in a madhouse? I was his doctor. I understand you were in shock, but you have no right to speak to me in such a way. I was trying to help him. He's dead. Capital job. Now, hold on just a minute. Jesus! Oh no! No! <laughs> Eddie, it'll be all right. Pull yourself together. I suggest nobody else goes down there. We should keep the room intact until the police can get here. I shall alert them first thing in the morning. What an unfortunate accident. An accident? You think so? Just after the madman's son turned up at our door? And yet you were the one standing over her body with blood on your hands.
How dare you? I was too late. I was trying to help her. She... She... <laughs> there, there, my sweet boy. Let's get you to bed. Angus, would you? Of course, ma'am. I think we will all benefit from a good night's sleep. I know you may have no reason to, but I need you to trust me. I'm the only one on your side when it comes to your father's death. Lady Margaret certainly isn't. But if I told you what I saw in the chapel, you'd have me in a padded cell just like my father. Why did you come here? To make sure my father was successfully in the ground? With all due respect, Mr. Gordon, I will not allow you to speak to me or about my work in such a tone. I tried everything I could to aid your father. Your father was heavily drugged when he was brought to me, to prevent any further violent outburst or so Lady Margaret had said. But something felt wrong, even then. I shall take my leave. Now, wait a minute. I found you in the chapel babbling about a drowned woman. Moments later, we found that poor maid drowned in her own blood. I think you need to talk to me. So, what was my father like when you locked him up? I didn't just lock him up. I tried to help him. He was convinced he was carrying some ancient curse that he was being haunted by evil. I wish I had reached him, had been able to reach him. Maybe if I threw you a bone, you'd get off my back. Father was obsessed with the history of the family for as long as I can remember. Did your father actually believe his family was out to get him? Who knows? I think what scared him was beyond the physical. He used to babble about a dark force threatening him and our family. Was that why he moved you to India? To get as far away as possible? I believe so. And yet, here you are, in the very place he sought to protect you from. Who knows? Maybe there is an ancient evil in this place. An evil that drags us back no matter how far away we get. Even from the other side of the world. And what do you think? Was your father right? Are there things beyond the physical? He was a disturbed man. He saw things that weren't there. Things like a drowning woman floating in thin air. If you really want to help me, then let us find out what the maid knew. She was hiding something, but was too scared of Angus and Margaret to tell me. You think whatever she wanted to confide might be connected to her death? Maybe. Whatever I saw in the chapel, it has to be real. It has to be. A woman must have drowned herself in the lock. Because if it's all in my mind, like father, like son. Rory's not one for cleaning up after himself. Rory's not one for cleaning up after himself. This dumb waiter is huge. It is. It goes all the way to the second floor, but judging by the spiders, it's not used very often nowadays. The spiders? Oh, don't ask.
What is it? God! <laughs> I'll get you back. <laughs> oh, you can. Stop monkeying around. Come with me. I'll come inside in a bit. Don't go. Can I just have a few? It's not a request, girl. Don't worry. I'll be fine. What's happening to me? David? Is everything all right? We should make haste. Stunning. How curious! Come and look at this. Look, they form a clear circle. This can't be a fluke. Well, it looks like one of the stones is missing. I have you enough stone to weigh yourself down with. Something's carved into each one. I've never seen a rose like this before. I have. The gardener, Rory. He brought some down from the glass house. We need to examine... To find out who killed her? be sure she was murdered before we start pointing fingers. We need to examine the ma- That's an unusual looking rose. I noticed one lying by the side of the loch. Aye, that's been me. A flower for the flower of Skahandu, Cecilia. My aunt? They're for her? I grew them for her. She loved the roses, did Cecilia. No, the red ones, though. Made her think of blood, ye ken? Forgive me, but wouldn't it be more fitting to place them on her grave? Why, she's no there, is she, laddie? That's not where she rests. And I don't much stand by your modern god. Rory, what happened to her? What happened to Cecilia? 
I'm not in the mood to open old wounds, laddie. There are some strange markings carved into the stones on the shore. Runes, aye. I'm old-fashioned, I suppose. Still hold to the old ways. Superstitions don't gain validity just by being believed in for a long time. I'd watch that. Your precious science doesn't have all the answers, lassie. May I have some of the roses, Rory? I'd like to place them on Cecilia's grave. What she to you? You didn't ken her? No, I didn't. But she's family. And besides, Father always spoke fondly of her. He would even smile as he talked about playing in the gardens with her as a child. He did, did he? Aye, well, that's good to kin. I should have some left in the glass house. I'll speak to you later, Rory. Aye, I'm sure you will, laddie. Mm. Sorry, lassie, but you can't go in. It's for family only. Mm. Just hold on a moment. No, it's okay. I quite understand. You go ahead, and I'll wait here for you. If I must. I, you must. I know, it doesn't look like I have green fingers. Looking to break some more locks, laddie. Are these... I, Cecilia's roses. They're beautiful. I like to think so. But they seem to be the only thing that grows here. These are... dead as dodos. Hard to raise anything beautiful here, ever since Cecilia's gone. Can you tell me about Cecilia? What was she like? She was a lovely lassie, but uh, she had more than her share of troubles. Grandfather Edward. You can well enough, son. You said she wasn't in her grave. Aye, that I did, that I did. Did she drown? She did. Killed herself. Her body was never found. Now all I have of her is my memories. And they are not what they were. And... this. That is exquisite. Cecilia made this. She made it, I... for me. Girl must have cut her fingers a hundred times doing it. On the thorns, you can.
You are unworthy of the name Gordon. Get away from her, you coward! Get lost! You monster! Who is that old woman? It takes courage to confront Edward like that. The saccateurs Edward used, they ended up in this corner. He scratched the word Baron into her arm. What a monster. They lied to me. Who did? All of them. What just happened? I could ask you the same thing. You started to talk to yourself. And then you were throwing your arms about like you were fighting something. I couldn't see what. You started bawling and the lassie came in to see what was going on. She tried to settle you, but you just went for her. I saw an old lady. She wore a long, flowing dress. Her, her voice was strong. Determined. Sounds like Rosemary. She was Lady Margaret's mother. Was Cecilia not able to have children? Did that anger Grandfather Edward? Maybe you can see well enough too, son. Maybe you can. It wasn't her. It was her husband. He was the bother. Couldn't... Uh, <coughs> you can? I think so, yes. Aye, well, uh, Edward blamed Cecilia for it. For picking the wrong man for her mate. You'll be fine, laddie. You just need some fresh air. This place can get to ye. I need to know if there's proof to what I saw. The secretary should be... Here they are. How could I know? This seems awfully accurate for a forgotten memory. The crack is right there. Edward was furious. Seems like him and great-grandmother Rose didn't see eye to eye. Trust your instincts, laddie. David, are you all right? Am I all right? I should be asking you. I'm so sorry I hurt you. I don't know what happened. Don't worry. I faced much worse in the asylum. She's tough. I don't think it's possible to face her. Sorry again. 
Maybe don't leave me outside like a naughty puppy next time. Yes, quite. I think that Edward may be responsible for the death of my Aunt Cecilia. Not directly. She drowned herself in the lock. I think that Edward drove her to it. Old families usually have a skeleton or two in the cupboard. Yes, but my family has a graveyard full. I feel like the madness that runs through this family, through these walls, is, is starting to seep into me too. I can help you, but you need to open up. You need to start talking to me. Uh, you would not believe me if I told you. Stubborn. Just like your father. Whatever secret this family is hiding, it's costing lives. Cecilia, the maid. My father. God knows how many more over the years. We need to examine the maid's body in the cellar. To find out who killed her? To be sure she was murdered before we start pointing fingers. Let's see if my trusty key will get this open. Hmm, not like this. I've never seen a key like this before. It feels like Father wanted me to keep it a secret. I've never seen a key like this before. It feels like Father wanted me to keep it a secret.
<sighs> Not like this. We need to examine the... We need to examine the maid's body in this to find out who can If you'd just like to wait out here, sir. I need to speak with Eddie. The young master and her ladyship are otherwise detained. Fair enough. There's no doubt about his loyalty, nor with whom it lies. Uh, Mr. McKinnon! Uh, Angus, may I have the key to the cellar? You may not, sir. As Mr. Harrison said, it will remain locked until the police arrive. That's a fair point. I'm just concerned that some of the game in the cellar may have been caught illegally. Poached by young Eddie there. Well... I'd be happy to get rid of the evidence. For Eddie to be found poaching on another family's estate could prove embarrassing. You're barely part of this family, but you have a point. I'm the new owner of the estate. I worry what people will say about it. About the family. I think the dead maid will have them chatting already. I do, and I don't think Lady Margaret would take kindly to any such embarrassment. Uh, upon reflection, 
removing the evidence may be the best course of action. Here you are, sir. Nobody in this house is particularly chatty. Not even when I have an actual question for them. There's no doubt about it. We need to examine... To find out who... Good thing I found that map. He would have never given up the Seleki otherwise. What a horrific way to die. What a horrific way to die. They seem to be a house full of carnivores. Her neck's been broken, and with some considerable force, it seems. Her necklace looks like gold, albeit a plain design. And it's missing any form of pendant. Still, well beyond a maid's salary. It... Oh, where's that sudden draft coming from? Mr. Gordon? Your Speak stag to me, please. is here, my little doe. Little doe? Not exactly the usual way to address the staff. The missing pendant. He threw it into the Bloodfield Basin. David, can you hear me? He 
to see my will. We're all here, sir. All down in the dark. We're... Something's coming. The attic, sir. She's in the attic. What just happened? You look like you were in some kind of trance. Perhaps the lack of sleep is affecting me. Or the visions that you'd think me insane if I described them to you. I know you're holding out on me. I am on your side, remember? I thought I'd proven that to you already. Perhaps I'm misjudging her. Your father wouldn't speak to me either. Please, let me help you. Or not. I'm not a patient. I'm not a madman. I feel like I've missed something. Ugh, that's horrible. You're not the one with your hand in it. French. I don't speak French. I do. It says for Clara, forever yours. Who's Clara? <laughs> I don't know. Yet another relative, perhaps? We should ask someone who's been around here for longer. How did you know it was there? The pendant, I mean. If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. A hunch! Eddie gave this to her. We should ask him to his face just what his relationship was with her. This isn't another ghost story, is it? Look, you wouldn't understand. I can't... What I do understand is that we cannot accuse a man of murder without proof. The scene really did rip when she tried to get away from him.
It's labeled Mallory. As in Eddie Mallory. Recognize that? The necklace. Is that? A young Eddie and his mother, Clara. I regret to inform you that your husband, Corporal Victor Mallory, number 874511, was killed in action with the enemy on the day of the 14th of September in Ypres. Your husband was involved in an advance against enemy lines. While he and his fellow soldiers fell, the action was successful, and you can take comfort in knowing his sacrifice saved many lives. It was not possible to get his remains away, and he was buried in a soldier's grave. Please accept the condolences of all the company. Yours. Captain Arthur Jones, 4th Army. Thank you for your last letter. My heart soars with every word of yours I read. I touch the ink and imagine your fingers are just inches from mine. That we can almost touch. That I can almost feel the warmth of your skin once more. Young Edward grows more like his father each day. You'd be amazed how he shares your looks. I long for the day that this terrible war is ended and you return home to us so we can be a family once more. I shall write to you again soon. Know that until then you are always in our hearts. Your loving wife, Clara. The date. She was writing this when the death notice arrived. Oh, the poor woman. You see? The necklace was his mother's. He gave it to the maid. The maid! You're right. We need to speak to him about this. But how could you know this? I can't help you if you don't tell me. Cousin Eddie might be a murderer. How I draw my conclusions can wait for now. You see? The... But how could you know this? Cousin Eddie might be a murderer. How I draw my conclude. Eddie, I need to ask you about the maid. About Elsa. You didn't know her! I know that you and her were, that is to say, 
I know you had feelings for her. What? That's poppycock! You're as deranged as your father was! David, really? You go too far with this behaviour. The police will be here soon. Would you not prefer to clear this up before they get here in case they link Eddie with a crime? Now look here, young lady. How dare you speak? That's enough. Eddie. My little doe. Strange thing to call the help. Uh, how? It was just... Just harmless fun, that's all. You gave her this. It was your mother's. Uh, I did. It was. Eddie! I was just trying to cheer her up. She has nothing, and I had no need of it. You know she sends... <sighs> you know she sent most of her money home to her grandmother. Her clothing was ripped, as if someone was trying to force themselves upon her. I would never have hurt her. You're a worthless liar. You think she thought being pressed against a dead animal was harmless fun? How do you know? It's true. Elsa and I... I would never have laid a finger on her. We were in love. I helped her with everything. Even with her chores. Uh, uh, Rose and... That's quite enough. Eddie, you are obviously upset. And you are not helping, David. Angus, will you please take the young master upstairs? As you say, ma'am. I think you have caused quite enough disruption here. We shall settle this heritage dilemma first thing tomorrow. I don't think so. I have more questions now than ever about my father, the maid, this whole damn house. Have a care, David. Need I remind you of your father's temper? I would never. Given the current mental state of Master Eddie, who should be a part of the heritage considerations, any discussion on the topic would be futile at this point. Would you not agree? <sighs> Thank you, Leah. Maybe it's a good thing you're here after all. Impudent brats! What's going on? Did you notice when Margaret got angry? When Eddie mentioned chores involving Rose. What does that mean? It can only have something to do with Lady Rosemary and Aunt Cecilia. And whatever the maid was doing in the attic. The attic? Mm, I saw the maid coming down the stairs with a tray. But there's nothing up there but an empty room. Or so I thought. Interesting. What is it, David? I have to see. David, wait! You have to start confiding in me, David. What are you seeing? I think I'm seeing ghosts. Ghosts of those who have died here. I see my father as a child. He's trying to communicate with me. Perhaps you visited here as a child. Maybe you're remembering stories a father told you of this place when you were young. You see? I said you wouldn't believe me. If I'm only remembering things, how would I have known where to find a pendant? How could I have known he tried to force himself on her? Unless you think I killed her. I don't think you killed anyone, David. And you're right. I can't explain it. So? 
So we focus on the facts as we know them. <laughs> Go on. You saw the maid's body. Her neck was broken. That was the work of a human, not a ghost, yes? I, I suppose so, yes. Lady Margaret knows more than she's saying, that's for sure. Godspeed getting anything out of that old hag. No, I know. But Eddie might be an easier option. Yes. Yes, we need to find him. And make sure Margaret isn't there to interrupt. I believe she's already gone to bed, but I'll check. You go find Eddie. Well, that's clear enough. Well, hello, my dear Elsa. Oh, Sir Edward, you look very handsome today. Eddie? Why, thank you. You're as beautiful as ever, my little doll. Oh, mwah, mwah. Eddie, can you hear me? What can you tell me about Great Grandmother Rose? What did Elsa have to do? Eddie! Self made dolls. Ugh. The stuff of nightmares.
What do you see here, Eddie? You'll be quite safe, the little rabbit said to his brothers and sisters. The fox is fast asleep, so the rabbits tiptoed past, and the fox was sly. He wasn't asleep at all. He opened his yellow eyes. I've warned you before to mind your place. This will be the last time you defy me. The eyes of the fox, they shone with cruel light as he punched on the rabbits and ate them all, one by one. It was only then he went to sleep, his tummy full, his heart content. I wonder what's on the other side. Is there... Uh, no, can't see a switch or lever. I guess not all castles are like Edgar Allan Poe used to describe them. A secret passage. What do you think you're doing? That won't be long, I hope. Look after Eddie. Just a little further. That's it. Open wide. Good. Good. I don't I want any. That's all right, dear. Did I tell you that John's son David has arrived? He's as bothersome as his father. Not worthy of this place. Poor Angus will never recover from the sight of John's charred remains. Selfish, selfish man. Please. Don't. I do not enjoy this, as you well know, but you brought it on yourself. Your son was a good man. You should not have defied him. skin and bones. How is she still alive? I fumbled and switched it was in the bookcase. You scared me half to death. Well, you will insist on wandering off without telling me where you're going and I just managed to avoid Lady Margaret when <laughs> Jesus God.
I saw this. In a vision? Edward beat her with it. Used it to cripple the poor woman. Oh my god. And he hung it there to remind her every day. Take it down. You're sure? Do it! Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> Rose? Rosemary? Can you hear me? Rosemary, I'm David, John's son, your great-grandson. Here, try this. No, like this. Gently. Who did this to you? <laughs> Edward, I was bad. I disobeyed. Disobeyed? How did you disobey? Cecilia, I tried to stop him. Stop what he was doing. What was he doing, Rosemary? to Cecilia. I don't think you'll get anything more out of her. Poor woman. Come on, Lady Rosemary. We'll get you out of here. No! We can get you somewhere safe. I'm safe here. In this room. Safe. From the black mirror. <laughs> the black mirror. Margaret has a lot to explain.
I think we need to have words with her ladyship. Margaret, we need to talk about... Lady Margaret, if you please. Never mind that. What the hell are you doing with Rosemary? You're one to talk. You're just like your father, leaving nothing but fear and misery in your wake. What in God's name are you talking about? You spoke to young Eddie, did you not? Now he's convinced everyone is trying to kill him. He has taken poor Andrew hostage and is threatening his life. Where is he? He's taken him to the old wing, and he is armed. I'll go. I can talk to him. You will not. You two have caused quite enough trouble already. We? How dare you, when you continue to worship Edward, even though he drove poor Cecilia to drown herself? I will not allow you to... To what? To speak the truth? To say that Edward... He never touched her! You come here. And you... No, you. You are the one in the wrong here. You know more than you're saying and we both know it. There's something in this place. An evil that has plagued our family for generations. Instead of blaming others, maybe you should look closer to home for the cause of your misfortune. You know nothing. What I did, what I do, everything, everything is for this family. How can you possibly understand? Please, my lady, we can discuss this later. Miss Farber, you need to speak to Master Eddie. Take us to him. <laughs> 